Good morning. My name is Savia Tucker. I'm a hip and knee reconstructive surgeon at Johns Hopkins Orthopedics, specifically at Howard County General Hospital. Today, I'm going to be discussing some advances in knee arthroplasty and the management of knee arthritis, specifically thinking about custom kinematic cuts versus smart kinematic implants. Which one of these is the key to restore anatomic function for the arthritic knee? The question I'd like to ask my peers in the audience is would you treat these three patients the same way? On the left is a patient with bicompartmental arthritis in the medial and patellofemoral compartments. In the middle is an athletic patient with tricompartmental arthritis that has some degree of constitutional varus. And finally, in the end, is a patient with a windswept deformity with a valgus on the right and a varus knee on the left. Our current choices are between various different alignment options and various different smart implant options. The alignment option specifically of interest is kinematic alignment. This is Charles Rivier. Charles is a French trained surgeon who now practices in the United Kingdom and he has written a wonderful review about various different alignment options available for the total knee patient. So think about a patient that has constitutional varus as shown in the picture. Now on the extreme right is a systematic method of aligning these patients back to their neutral mechanical axis. And on the left are more patient specific guides such as unicompartmental knees and kinematically aligned total knees. So as we know, mechanical and anatomic alignment aligns them back to their neutral mechanical axis for the most part. Whereas kinematic alignment is a bony procedure a ligament sparing and a soft tissue sparing procedure, which then allows you to customize various different alignment options. The way to think about this is assume you have a long length radiograph of a patient. On the right knee, there's a neutral mechanical axis, and this is what a mechanically aligned total knee would look like. On the left knee, there is a slight degree of varus, and this is what a kinematically aligned knee would look like. Kinematic alignment has an interesting history at Johns Hopkins with David Hungerford and Ken Krakow. They both came up with this concept of measured resection and anatomic alignment, which was the precursor to kinematic alignment. Along with the alignment philosophy, they also developed the porous coated anatomic implant using Stryker Howmedica instrumentation, which was groundbreaking at that time. In modern terms, it's important to make an analogy to hip resurfacings. Kinematically aligned knees, just like hip resurfacings, are a bony resurfacing procedure in which the thickness of the cuts that you make varies with the wear that you see in various different compartments. It's a ligament sparing and a patient specific procedure for the most part, and there are new landmarks for implant positioning. These landmarks include various kinematic axes. In green is the transverse axis through the femur for tibial flexion and extension. In purple is the transverse axis for patellar flexion and extension. And in yellow is the longitudinal axis for tibial rotation in relation to the femur. The goal of kinematic alignment is to maintain the natural asymmetry that exists between extension and flexion in normal knees as compared to a more mechanically aligned model in which you want equal flexion and extension gaps to reduce that asymmetry. Newer implants also exist in order to try and preserve kinematics. Rotating platform designs, medial pivot designs, and asymmetric designs are some of them. In addition to that, we also have designs that can maintain both the cruciate ligaments and multi-compartmental or unicompartmental arthroplasty. So what has changed for the surgeon? Initially, we would only think about the continuum of constraint from the least to the most constrained prosthesis. But now we also have the ability to think about kinematic options in addition to constraint options for patients. My algorithm is very simple. I like to think of knee arthritis as a compartment specific disease. I then like to obtain long length radiographs to understand which compartment is affected and which surgical treatment to plan for the patient, along with which ligaments to release. 
And then I'd like to temper this with patient expectations and treatment options. Long length radiographs allow me to assess the varying degrees of deformity, assess how much that deformity can be passively corrected or corrected by the implant, and then plan for appropriate bone cuts and releases. In the patient with a bicompartmental arthritis model, I'd like to do a simultaneous bicompartmental arthroplasty in the medial or lateral compartments coupled with the patellofemoral compartment. In a patient who is an athletic soccer player or any other athlete with constitutional varus, I like to preserve that varus by means of my implant, which achieves some degree of joint line obliquity. And finally, with a patient with a windswept deformity, I like to preserve the mechanics by bringing them back to their mechanical alignment. As you can see, this is a patient who initially came to me with a bad windswept deformity. And finally, the outcome at three years of follow-up with an excellent restoration of her gait and function. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. And this is my contact information for further questions or concerns. Thank you very much.